Hello and welcome. My name is Nipolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm going to be talking about a non-fiction memoir by Aaron Nations uh, entitled Gumballs. Predominantly memoir, I did in my written review mean to say that it's more of a creative non-fiction piece um, because it does interweave some fictional and non-fiction aspects to it. Quite obviously, it's not like there's some sort of massive deceit going on or anything else terribly complicated. So while the overall book is made up of maybe four distinct narratives, namely Aaron's time growing up, labeled female at birth, and uh, one of three triplets. So lots of exciting vignettes there. The second narrative strand is just looking at Aaron's life as an adult as he transitions and works in a grocery store in Portland, Oregon. The third is sprinkling of kind of gay personal ads um, in what feels like pretty quintessential Portlandia sort of way. I am a complete outsider and not actually made it further west than Arizona once to see the Grand Canyon. Anyway, but I did watch some of Portlandia and it did strike me as something that I could definitely see happening in that. So, I don't know, rightly or wrongly, seemed okay, fit. Um, and fourth, kind of a fictionalized story about a very shy high school gay uh, individual kind of lamenting his life in fairly adorable kind of quintessential high school way. Thinking a bit too deeply perhaps on how best to describe the way these vignettes interweave uh, in a way that is uh, wholly positive because I liked it. The uh, vignettes are all really well self-contained. Having just finished this book I do feel like anyone who is going to dive into it as long as you enjoy Aaron Nation's as a person to learn more about, as well as uh, Aaron Nations as someone who creates other things, other stories. Probably really enjoy this, he on it a bit longer after my initial confusion about why the, these fiction and non-fiction were being mixed together. Well, I didn't find a definitive answer from the horse's mouth, as it were. Did find it... I do think it is interesting to perhaps put uh, fictional stories beside non-fictional bits like this because what someone creates is obviously a um, intrinsic part of who they are as well. But yeah, it's not necessarily a straightforward memoir which did appear to throw off some people in the review, so just giving you a heads up. Besides this interesting narrative structure, the thing that I liked most about the comic is um, definitely the art style. It's very professionally consistent, but also really interesting. I really liked the square edges of the people, and I thought that was really fun. I also thought his particular solution for how to draw ears was pretty fun and definitely something to keep in mind, though not something I should ever rip off. That was a really great book. It was. Uh, I did for a moment when I was requesting it, because it just came in at the library, momentarily confused it with Jawbreakers, and I had to look into that to make sure I wasn't getting some comics gate nonsense. If you're interested in looking at a list of non-fiction transgender memoirs, as opposed to fictional transgender memoirs, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, if you're interested in that sort of nonsense, most of the ones I've read, plus a few that I have yet to read, um, are now part of that list. And definitely let me know in the comments or anywhere if you um, know of any that I missed. <sighs> Good way to normalize transgenderedness and expand people's ideas and to let other people know what their future may hold. Um, anyway. Bye. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13 also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain 
Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.